And uh, the reason I wanted to hold you on for just a few more minutes is because you sent us this cool article um, with a link to a podcast about Brian De Palma. And Brian De Palma talking about when he first saw the Star Wars rough cut at a party George, a dinner party George Lucas threw for a bunch of his industry pals like Spielberg and, uh, and others were there. And uh, Brian De Palma appeared on the Light the Fuse podcast, and uh, this subject came up. The Light the Fuse podcast, a podcast all about the Mission Impossible films, and De Palma directed the first one. And uh, they brought up this Star Wars thing. I got some information about the dinner. Before we actually hear the uh, clips, I just want to get people up to speed on what this is all about. As I said, George Lucas had this dinner party. I'm looking at the making a Star Wars book here right now. And here you can even see there's a picture of the dinner party. I don't know how well you guys can see that. But they're all Look there. at it. There it can is. You guys see it? Yeah. yeah they they all had uh, spaghetti. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Look at George got his, his little sweater. Yep. And there's you can see there's Brian De Palma. Yeah. So yeah, there, yeah, there's this is historic. So that's the photo. The story behind the the screening is uh, this was a rough cut George was showing to some of his industry pals to get their you know take their temperature about Star Wars. And uh, here in the book, Making of Star Wars by J. W. Rinsler, under the um, the title Notorious Preview. The Notorious GL having a Notorious Preview. Uh, it says. Uh, he had shared his successive drafts with his close friends. Lucas screened his rough cut for many of the same sometime in mid-February 1977. Among the attendees were Brian De Palma, Matthew Robbins, Hal Barwood, the Hewicks, Steven Spielberg, Jay Cox, and a few people from ILM. I uh, usually show the rough cut to several friends to let them tear it apart and find out if there's anything I could do to improve it, Lucas says. Only Brian as is his nature, said anything really negative about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so De Palma has this reputation as being this guy, you know, the only one of George Lucas's friends who really crapped all over Star Wars <laughs> when he saw the uh, the, the rough cut. Um, this is uh, De Palma. Who who was saying this? Steven Spiel. Oh, this is George Lucas recounting the dinner party. Okay, Steven said. This is the greatest movie I've ever seen, and it's going to make a hundred million dollars. The Hewicks were dubious. They were worried about it and me. But Brian was saying, what's all this force shit? Where's all the blood when they shoot people? You know, Brian, that's the way he is. He does that to everybody. He's very caustic. <laughs> that sounds like a fun so dinner party. <laughs> So there's the Palma. So the guys from the Light the Fuse podcast asked the Palma about this situation, and the Palma, you know, he spins it. He said, you know, it says it's, it's not exactly like that. He wasn't totally negative about it. So here's his first cut where he's talking about seeing George Lucas's Star Wars rough cut for the first time. Frame me as the guy that says the worst thing that drives everybody crazy. But if you're going to show me something, I'm going to tell you what I think about it. Why am I there unless I'm going to give an honest appraisal of what I've seen? And in this case, you know, the fact that Stephen says that only he saw the possibilities of Star Wars, that's not really true. We all saw it as a terrific thing that George had done. And we were well aware of where the special effects weren't there and how had they had cut in all these planes from other movies to be things that they were supposed to be, you know, the ships and stuff like that. But I did make a joke about the force. That's true. <laughs> yeah. What's all this force? <laughs> you know what? Kyle, well, have you ever been in a situation where you showed a rough cut of your film to someone and they were uh, a little negative? Uh, all the time and that's what you want as a filmmaker so I'm going through that process right now I'm, I'm locking picture on my new movie and uh, from about three weeks in the edit bay onward which is very premature 
uh, a lot of peers wait a lot longer to show people. I start bringing people in and, and showing them the, the movie. Because the more I watch it, the more I get a feel for it, the more I see how people respond to it and how they interact with the material it gives me a better understanding of not what's in my head or what I hope to do, but what really exists that I'm editing. Um, so what George is doing here is something that's very healthy and normal. It sounds like he's actually doing it late in the game. This said it was a mid-February dinner and the movie came out in May. Um, right. So it's not a lot of time to do it. You can't <laughs> reshoot. Um, it's purely, uh, he's looking for editorial uh, feedback. He's looking for pacing. He's looking for clarity. Um, you know, Rise of Skywalker had a lot of... Uh, Could be game, looking for compliments editing, too. Rewriting. You watch the movie, people give feedback, and you're like, this isn't working, or change this, make this uh, dialogue off screen, and you can collapse these parts together, and you can, or maybe you need someone to say off screen something to really hit home, this is happening. Like that that material, you know, FJ was talking about the, the scenes with with Han and, and Leia and, and Force Awakens. A lot of that was all off screen dialogue. And you do that editorial, that stuff you can do when you can't reshoot after you've reshot, and you still have to like accentuate and, and um, really hit home a story point or or an emotion. So that's what George is looking to do in this screening. What you do as a filmmaker, you're sitting down, you're hoping everyone's gonna, it's awesome, I love it. If you just did this one little thing, you're hoping for that type of simple feedback. Um, and so it is challenging when you have somebody like De Palma, but you want those people to come in and say, your crawl sucks. It's cheap. <laughs> Rewrite it. Reprint it. Like, but it sucks. And that sounds like he uh, more. And what he said is he did have a big hand in rewriting the opening crawl of Star Wars. Yeah, we got that clip um, actually. Jason, why don't you fire yeah. that off? Here's the Palma talking about uh, his specific hangups about the Force, and he does get into a little bit of uh, the crawl here and and explains his contributions to that. I just thought the idea of the Force is like you know, the Force. I would say. But I kept repeating it, you know, like, it doesn't seem like a great name for this kind of spiritual guidance, the force. <laughs> so needless to say, I had a lot to say about the force, which obviously I was terribly wrong about. But the other thing was that no one knew what was, you know, you know, the movie starts in chapter three. We're in a world nobody's ever knows anything about he's got all these funny names for people and i said george you've got to set this up somehow like those crawls in the uh, flash gordon movies where you you know uh, but george had that idea but it was all gobbledygook basically so i and jay cox went over the crawl and basically uh, rewrote it there you go just like oh. kyle was saying Interesting. I had no it's, idea that that Brian De Palma helped write that opening crawl. I wow. heard that actually that story for a little bit about De Palma. Um, you know, like just something in the film I'm doing right now. There's I put a tiny crawl. I wouldn't say it's like Star Wars, but it's more like you know Blade Runner or some text at the beginning. And a couple of really great filmmakers, you know, won the biggest Emmy last year, and another guy, you know, produced The Force Awakens, you know comes in and they gave me a little bit of feedback and they're like you know what for the uninitiated just say this just say it out front and it wasn't something that was scripted or planned but you put it there and suddenly it changes the way people feel about the rest of the the movie and so i can see the the importance of george's crawl in this movie because it sets the entire tone it's your it's your launch it's your first shot really i mean you're seeing words floating into space and how they're written and how efficient they are changes the way the rest of the material is going to be perceived forever so um, wait that's true they I'm are sure they are so he simplified it for george in a way because you look at like the phantom menace crawl and people would criticize that um and maybe that needed another pass or, or an edit you know um but i i think it's that's just part of the process and part of the filmmaking process it's not like painting which i do like you make that for yourself you know you're making a movie you want to know how people experience it in a in a in a room or a community and how they react to it and how they interpret it and that's just part of that that connection you get with cinema and um so i love screening it for people so george that's what i do you, you invite your your filmmaker friends in you're like all right there's no visual effects like here he had dogfight stuff in it you know my movie i have 980 missing visual effects people have to come in and watch it and they're like 
imagine what's on screen that all these characters are reacting to. Um, and if you're doing your job right, I'm just like uh, I'm sure George was doing with his cut at that late late stage. People are reacting to Han and Luke's reactions to blowing up ships in the dogfights, or uh, what's happening in the kinetically in that battle uh, at the Death Star. Like you see the the VFX, but you just haven't figured mapped in all the 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 exterior shots of the, the motion track ships. And but you cut to the interiors, and you've got the pilots, and then it does it work on a. Um, on a pace level? Does it work on a thrilling action level, even if the effect isn't right? So I'm sure they could all see the potential of Star Wars, that there was something magical here, but um, you want people to come in and kick your movie in the ass, like De Palma did. Mm. And thankfully he did, because he probably made Star Wars a better movie, because Brian De Palma sat in the room and bitched and was like, George, do better. <laughs> you know, and you get lazy. Not that you, not even that you get lazy, you get complacent. You're used to seeing your movie a hundred times. You want yep. someone to come in fresh Mick. you don't need that that whole little thing there 30 seconds this character saying this to this character who cares cut it you think oh wow i don't need it okay you're right oh my god you know so or sometimes you've got stuff that you think you don't need and you, you come in and someone's like no you actually need this but you need to go just push that thought a little farther and suddenly you're like oh this unlocks all these other things so mm. that process of having trusted friends and filmmakers Thankfully, you know, George had like like the greatest group maybe ever assembled coming in to watch his his films. Um, helped birth Star Wars is what it was, you know, because he had these great minds coming together and rooting for him as friends. Saying, I want your movie to be great. You're not you're not going to watch someone's movie to like make it worse. Uh, sometimes you impose too much of yourself when you're giving notes. You're like, do this and do this, and someone the filmmaker doesn't have the notes. He doesn't, or he doesn't have the the footage to go do it. He doesn't have the resources to go reshoot. But the filmmaker knows what they have or they don't have, you know. And something like a crawl is something that's free almost to to go rewrite. It's very easy. So you always got to keep your mind open. And George is an editor at heart. You know, he's always classified himself as that even before he's a writer or anything else. So I think he understands that process of editing and how malleable and flexible things are and how you can change the perception of something by the omission of something. Um, and uh, you know, that's why it's, you, you were talking earlier about Star Wars. It's such a, it's a montaged film. You go into the cantina and you feel it's this, this, this uh, symphony of quick shots, you know? Uh, you look at how JJ J. J. did like, um, you know, Mas Kanata's castle and you float in and you kind of drift through it all. George was like, cut, 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 cut. This character's doing this. You don't even get a full spatial sense, but because you compound all these shots together, it feels like something and you get a texture from it. And that's just the type of filmmaking George is about, like that opening montage of Apocalypse Now, which George had a heavy hand in um, helping with Francis on. Um, so, um, I think George respects that that process of editing, and that's that's why you bring those guys in because you want that that tough critical feedback. You don't want to release the movie and find out the crawl could have been better, or this <laughs> yeah. wasn't right. Was You'd too rather slow. hear it from your friends he, than the than the box office. That's for right. sure.